Views and opinions expressed within the following program are solely those of the individual. These views and opinions do not necessarily represent those of Shaw TV. Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney. Today's Thursday, March 14th, and this is Calgary Now. With hockey on every major sports channel, teams in every major city, and hockey rinks in every small town, it's hard to escape the highlight reel footage of players leveling thunderous body checks amongst each other as the game is played. Injuries are to be expected in any sport, and at every level much is done to reduce the impact and extent of the hits received while playing. Each year, studies are conducted to further understand the impact those injuries have beyond the near future. Concussions, a potential injury in every contact sport, are the most worrisome as they are not easy to diagnose and the consequences can last a lifetime. Much has been discussed this past year in Alberta to ban body checking at the Pee Wee level, yet Hockey Calgary and Hockey Alberta have yet to do so. With studies and evidence accumulating in favour of a ban, why are parents and coaches reluctant to impose one? Hockey has always been a physical sport, and like any physical sport, it can be argued the very essence of the game has a warrior-like aspect to it. Bodies collide open ice or along the boards as position and scoring opportunity are fought for. Ah, it is indeed a beautiful game. It could be said that the ability to properly remove a player from the puck is as coveted a skill as a goal-scoring sniper. The sport is a very fast one and can be violent, and as such, injuries are a real part of the game. Much debate has been given to when exactly that physicality should be introduced to our young players. This past spring, body checking was removed from the peewee level in Calgary, only to be quickly reintroduced via a secret ballot amongst area hockey associations in the summer. I'm sitting down with those in the know to discuss hitting and hockey in just a moment here. As always, we welcome you to join the discussion by calling 403-539-6710 or drop us a line on Twitter at Calgary Now Show. Stay with us. In terms of hitting in peewee hockey, having never played hockey, I can't formulate an opinion that's specific to hockey, but I played a lot of contact sports growing up, and I think that it's definitely something that should be studied. If there are concussions, if there are people committing suicide now, it's something we should look at. But as per the argument of stopping it at an early age, I don't know if that's necessarily going to help the kids at this point. Though the issues of concussion is definitely prime amongst minds of parents who may not put their kids in hockey anymore if more and more um, ex-players get hurt. Welcome back to the show. Tonight we have Dr. Ian Ald and Paul Carson, VP of Hockey Development at Hockey Canada. Guys, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, Paul, why don't you tell me about your responsibilities with Hockey Canada real quick. I oversee uh, hockey development uh, right across the country. I have a staff that uh, works with me in that area and then we work with all of the provincial branch bodies uh, to manage everything from coach education to player development, safety in the game, uh, officiating and administrator training. Lots on your plate, it sounds like. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate it. Ian, <clears throat> yes. tell us, uh, you're a very busy guy as well, actually work with, uh, well, why don't you tell us, you work sure. with a few organizations. So. Yep, I'm a family medicine trained uh, doctor who practices both a split practice between family medicine and sports medicine. So I've been in practice for 10 years now, and uh, for the last 10 years, I've been involved with numerous sports teams in Calgary, Calgary Hitman. Calgary Stampeders, uh, Calgary Roughnecks, and I've also worked uh, for Hockey Canada for about nine years now doing trips with them. So you guys are buddies? We're buddies. We've yeah, known each other for years, right yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much for being yeah. here. So we'll get right to it, guys. Now, in Quebec, uh, there is no hitting at the peewee level, and studies have shown that in Alberta, our peewee hockey players are actually at risk, three times more at risk, of injury because we do have body checking involved. Now, as we all know, in the summer, that ban on hitting at the PB level was, was essentially voted down. Why was that? I mean, if the evidence is showing that, you know, these kids are getting hurt at the PB level, why is it that our local hockey associations, do we think, are so against it? Well, I think the challenge uh, that we face as an organization is, is dealing with the perception of body checking being introduced at an earlier age has uh, some safety components to it at a later age. And, you know, I think, what we try to do is we try to mitigate risk in the way that we educate our coaches, the way that we educate our officials to manage the game. Um, but at the same time, continuing to study the body checking issue and continuing to look at where the right place is to uh, introduce it and, and at what skill level it belongs is, is an important part of the work that we do at Hockey Canada and that we do with our branches. Yeah. 
So is it a debate still, or is it the position of Hockey Canada that perhaps it should be bumped to the bantam level? Well, in fairness, the, our position is what the rule book says. Yeah. So yeah. the rule book at this time says it can be introduced at Pee Wee. Yeah. Branches have the ability to strengthen it, and that's why Hockey Quebec has chosen to introduce it at the bantam rep level, not at the house league level. And as you travel across Canada, the landscape of body checking is, uh, is, is quite unique in, in each area. But for the most part, it's not in recreational hockey at any age level. It's more the elite, uh, it's, rep. It's it's, elite, elite yeah, level. Yeah. So then the then the real challenge becomes: what's the best time? Is it is it an early introduction in Pee Wee, or is it maybe looking at introducing body checking in the practice environment at the Pee Wee level? Equip youngsters with the skills as they graduate to Bantam hockey. Seems and, like a fair compromise. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, Ian, the adage has been kicked around: uh, the sooner, the better. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I guess there's a bit of background on, you know, how we've been researching this this area. I mean, the research is somewhat in its infancy. There's a lot of questions that need to be uh, answered and looked at. But, you know, the most recent research that's come out that everyone talks about and it's thrown around in hockey circles is Carolyn Emery out of the University yeah. of Calgary came up yeah. with that study that compared uh, hockey players in uh, Pee Wee and Alberta versus the Quebec and right. uh, Quebec don't have checking in Pee Wee and the Alberta do and so they compared it and you know what came out of that was uh, you know a threefold increase in all injuries concussions severe injuries and concussions lasting more than 10 days so you know it's uh, it's a very good study and I think it it's you know brought up the the issue of should we be allowing a, a pediatric brain to take those sorts of injuries and um, you know I I fully realize you know hockey is a is a tough sport uh, fast-moving athletes, people are going to get hurt. You know, my main question, I think, is the, pe the, the we got to look at 12-year-olds. They're not half a 24-year-old. Their, their physiology is very different, and how they deal with concussions is very different. And what we know is that, you know, they're more susceptible to it, and when they do get these concussions, it often lasts a lot longer, and it's very difficult for physicians to try and tease out that in that population. So, you know, exactly when to bring it in and... and uh, you know, my stance definitely is uh, delaying it a little bit, and that comes from my medical background, and it's influenced by what I see in my office. You know, th how we do that, I think, you know, Paul has, has been dealing with this issue for years, and he knows the nuts and bolts of, you know, what the issues are and when we do it. You know, that's not really my area as far as policy goes. Right, but, which is fair. Medically you know, speaking, though, the recommendation of that study was to, to bump the introduction of hitting to the bantam level, mm -hmm. which is 13 and 14-year-olds. Now, a lot of people watching the program are going to say, well, how does that work? Because, I mean, these kids are going to be bigger. Uh, they're going to be faster. You would think that the risk for injury mm -hmm. would be amongst the 13 and 14-year-olds. Absolutely. And, and, and the, the next study that was followed up, which made logical sense, is Carolyn Emery compared those hockey players in, in Bantam in Quebec versus those hockey players in Bantam in Alberta. Alberta had two years of experience of body checking and, and the Quebec uh, players did not. And, and what we found there is that there was no increase in injury risk. There was an increase where we found in injuries that lasted more than seven days, a 33% increase. But, you know, when you take all injuries together and all concussions together, there was no difference. And, you know, I think Paul can speak to this much better than I can, but, he, you know, Body checking is is a it's a skill, but it's a continuum, and I think um, he's talked about this uh, for years. Is you know we need to introduce it young um, with contact and angling and stick checking and and all those sorts of things, and then bring that across and 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 again you can speak to yeah, the, so the coaches well, and stuff like that. Yeah, interesting. Great, that's a great point. Is the onus on the coaches then to ensure that these kids are taught not only to the level of body check against another player, but to receive a hit as well. The system overall, like, let's be fair and say that, you know, coaches have a role to play, parents have a role to play, uh, officials have a role to play, but so do, so do players. And I, you know, the way I put it, and I appreciate Ian's point that, you know, it is a continuum. So what we like to talk about is the checking game, the skating skills, the stick checks, uh, body contact and contact confidence. It really worries me that when body checking is not in the game, coaches totally ignore teaching checking skills. Yeah. And they put youngsters at risk when that happens. Because youngsters need to know that collisions can happen. Um, I can be three feet away from the boards and if I haven't been taught um, that I'm, I'm outside that safe zone of being next to the boards, then I put myself at risk. 
And even though it might not be a body checking environment, there's still a possibility that I could be bumped by somebody, knocked into the boards, and I'm at risk. So, you know, when you look at the continuum, there's a lot of things to be taught. Coaches have a lot of responsibility in terms of teaching. There's a lot of pressure on coaches to win hockey games. Um, you know, wins and losses seem to be a lot of times the, the way we measure the success of coaches, and yet I would want to be an individual who observes a coach's practices over a period of time and say whether or not developmentally those practices um, allow for that coach to be successful. Oh, definitely, especially when we're talking about, you know, 11 and 12 year olds. Yeah. I mean, let's get realistic. I know it's a, it's a passionate yeah. game. We're very passionate about the sport nationwide. But I think people need to realize, I mean, if, if these kids can't compete because of injury, well then really there's no point at all, yeah. is there? Now, is it mandated for coaches? to be teaching these kids the skills. Now you mentioned they, they're under a lot of pressure, but is it actually mandated? It's mandated to take the clinic. Yeah, but, um, but who, who actually mandates that it's in the practice plan and that it's a part of the development process for right. the players? And then who monitors that? So, you know, that is a bit of a challenge in our system and that's why, that's why I think programs like this and opportunities to talk to the media are, are important because it elevates the awareness and, and parents can place that demand. I, I remember talking to a parent a couple of years ago from a, another province and when we talked about um, the, the application of drills and teaching for body checking, the parents said, we haven't had a practice for eight weeks. So what skills are being learned in practice? Never mind you know, the body checking issue, what other skills are being ignored as we just play game after game after game and don't really equip the kids with the skills they need to be successful. Right. I just want to jump back to concussions uh, just briefly. Now, we're, we are seeing a rise in concussions amongst young people, but I, I wonder about the setting. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here just a little bit for a sec, guys, so humor me. Uh, could it be argued maybe that we're looking a bit harder for these concussions nowadays? I mean, I'm a product of the minor hockey system. You know, I played hockey. I didn't wear a mouth guard. wasn't mandated. Now in Calgary, or pardon me, Hockey Calgary has mandated the use of a uh, mouth guard, which will, uh, of course, contribute to the prevention of concussions. A lot of my friends throughout the system, minor hockey, I think we're all doing okay. Uh, are we maybe looking a little bit harder for those concussions nowadays? Definitely. You know, there, there's an education component to that in the physician field where the information gets out there and you know you start looking for these things we're told to to watch out for these things um, you know whether it's a difficult thing to study whether they're actually increasing because we're looking for them more or there's more aggression in the game and the style of the game is played and I think you probably comment on that a little bit more than I can but you know, the, just one point on the, the mouth guards actually, yeah. it, the most recent consensus paper says that mouth guards actually don't prevent concussions, as do helmets don't either. Right. Yeah, I mean concussions, are, or sorry, um, mouth guards have been proven to actually orofacial trauma, dental trauma, but there's no evidence to say they actually prevent concussions. It, you know, the interesting thing about concussion research and management is, you know, every three to four years there's a, a what's called a consensus conference that happens usually in somewhere nice like Zurich. And uh, you know, every time they do these, they actually come up with more questions than they do answers. You know, our, our knowledge about concussions is best described by one of the doctors that was there that we're kind of at the end of the beginning. Yeah. You know, we, we've started over the last 15 years to identify them, to study them. You know, we're coming out with a little bit more knowledge, but there's a, there's a huge component of the meat that we're, we're getting into now. And, and in 10 years, you know, maybe we're not having this discussion about body checking and peewee because it's been proven or disproven. M my sense is it's going to continue in, the, in this way, but uh, uh, it, it, you know, we, we are in our infancy in this, but um, it's, it's still a, you know, a hugely yeah, important it's, issue. It's important for people to realize yeah. that too, it sounds like. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. Here's what our rant pack has to say. Stay with us. Hitting should not be taken out of peewee hockey. It is incumbent on coaches to teach their players how to take a hit, how to deliver a hit, and do so respectively for the other players that they are playing against. It's incumbent on parents to teach their kids that it is an aggression, but it's part of the game. It's hockey, it's Canada, it's kids. Play the game. A little bit of two minds about this hitting thing in peewee hockey. I see the value of learning how to hit and how to take a hit, but where it's young men, young boys at that point who may not have yet had uh, sportsmanship and appropriate conduct properly instilled in them, I'm a little concerned about putting the cart before the horse, as it were. I think 
kids need to learn the, the sportsmanship part of the game before they learn how to beat each other up. Hey Calgary, welcome back. Tonight we're talking body checking at the Pee Wee hockey level. Don't forget, if you like, give us a tweet or shoot us a phone call. So guys, uh, I think a lot of what's going on in hockey today has to do with what's perceived as a lack of respect amongst professionals. I mean, if you look at it, these guys uh, in the NHL and even in international play, uh, not a lot of respect going on a lot of the time. Guys who are concussed at that level, I mean, let's be honest, those are intent to injure hits. Uh, do you think maybe that that's filtering its way down to, uh, to our youth? I mean, I really hope not, but uh, I think it, it's, it's worthy of discussion. What do you think, Ian? I do. Those kids, definitely, they, they emulate what they see on TV. Um, you know, there was a well-written article by lacrosse, another contact sport, by a, a gentleman that plays pro lacrosse in Philadelphia, and he's just suffered a recent concussion, one of many, and, you know, he discusses that point. And the hit that he got recently got injured on was a 50-50 ball. He looked at the ball, went for the ball. The other player had no idea and no intention to get the ball, went straight through him. And he talks about that lack of respect between players. And, you know, it's such a competitive environment that players are always going to look for that edge, you know, to stick around. And I think it's more incumbent on the, the leagues and the NHL and the NLL to actually Sure. start to change the culture. I mean, the athletes do too, but fortunately when they get in the heat of the battle, uh, we need to change the rules and punish a little bit harder and educate as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Punish a little bit harder might be the key. What do you, what do you we, think um, about that, We've Paul? been working with uh, the Canadian Junior uh, Hockey League. Uh, five of the, the uh, uh, leagues within that larger group um, entered into a pilot project to look at ways to take out the bullying and aggressive behavior in the sport. Um, it really started out at looking at fighting, but in the end it became, you know, what are the behaviors in the game that really need to be clamped down on? And in the first two years of the study, we looked at a sanctioning process where an accumulation of the same penalties would result in stiff sanctions. Um, over time, we discovered that players knew which categories they were nearing the end, so then it was another category they moved into, and Canadian Junior A Hockey made a great move last year in that pilot project by saying, you know what, we're going to bring all those penalties into one category now, and so if you accumulate five penalties, um, five aggressive penalties, like before it would be if you, if you accumulated five check from behind, you would get a one-game suspension. Now it was a case of a check from behind, a high stick, uh, a charging, a boarding, any kind of penalty that fit into the category that was being used as the, uh, the marker then the, the sanction was applied. And I think uh, Ian's right. I mean, the, the stiffer the sanction, um, you know, the more understanding the coaches are of the challenges that, that face players in the game if they're, if they're going to be expelled. Um, just one thing, Kevin, I always talk about unintended consequences and how um, the evolution of the game and some of the things we put in the game that create a safer um, application for the player sometimes cause another um, a consequence we're not ready for. So uh, simply stated, 20 years ago when we introduced the face mask, we started to see sticks and hands come up. Mm -hmm. And now we've protected you from facial in in injuries, but we've got people contacting one another in the head. Yeah. And, and that's a problem. But, but concussions just aren't about head contact. Concussions are about accelerated bodies. And we're talking about youngsters moving at some pretty good speeds and, and being involved in collisions that will result in that, that movement of the brain inside the skull, even though there isn't head contact. So it's not, it's not just about head contact. It's, it's about understanding the mechanism of the injury, the signs and symptoms that Ian talked about, and you know, elevating the awareness to be able to say, you know what, youngster, you need to step back from the game. We need to have you checked out. You're showing signs and symptoms. If you're clear, great, no problem. You're back in the game. If you're not, we need to take the proper steps to uh, make sure you don't return to play too soon. Absolutely. Now, I remember when I was playing hockey, uh, we had the, the stop signs on our, the back of our jersey. I think it was early 90s. Still do. Still do. Yes. Obviously, that's reduced spinal cord injury, I would think. Yeah. I would hope by now it has quite a few. Yeah. I'm just curious as to uh, the results that we saw. I mean, admittedly, I didn't do the research, but do we really see a drastic drop in the hitting from behind? I think that message is out there. I'm just wondering how we can go about getting the concussion message, message pardon me, out there as well. Well, if, uh, I'll start, and, and Ian, uh, I don't mean to take up all the, all the time, but, you know, the stop patch has been a, an incredible campaign. 
And if you look at, uh, Dr. Charles Tatter's done a lot of the research on spinal cord injuries. And if you look at the uh, research on those numbers through the 80s and mid 90s, uh, those numbers have been drastically reduced while the population playing the game has increased. Mm -hmm. So the, the reality is the percentage of, of uh, those injuries happening are very, very rare, which is, you know, which is a sign that not just the stop patch, but the rule emphasis that's placed on checking from behind at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. uh, the stiffer sanction of even a check from behind for two minutes, a, a contact from behind that, that seems quite innocent. If a referee calls out a check from behind, you're out of the game. And players know that. And so it's, it's really got players thinking more about their, about their actions. And, yeah. and so it's a cultural shift. And the yes. same thing's happening with the head contact rule. It's a cultural shift, but now just putting your glove in someone's face or pushing somebody in the back of the head might cost you four minutes. And it might cost you four minutes at a crucial time in the game. So it is having an effect and it is a cultural shift. And we're starting to see players get their hands down, um, contact is more through the middle of the body and not up into the face and the head area. Yeah, I mean, there's always an adaptation time with the players when these, these new policies are put in. Yeah. I sit on a committee with the WHL where we've, we've actually put into effect a number of different rules for these athletes and educated mm -hmm. them. You know, for instance, started as a 90 degree rule. And so the player that's carrying the puck has a 90 degree reasonable window to see what's coming at them. If you come from outside that, even if it's a clean check, they're gonna call it. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes time. They've actually narrowed that a little bit and, and they're actually coming in like this. And it's, it's difficult for players. I mean, they've been brought up to, you know, to hit a certain way and there's, there's a lot of change that happens. But, you know, a, as we continue to educate and, and, you know, Hockey Canada's website with the video clips on headshots and as we bring that stuff up through the grassroots, uh, you know, hopefully, and I think it will, it percolates up. Yeah, I tend to agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, gone from the NHL are the, the Scott Stevens of, of yesteryear, who was paid a top dollar to essentially deliver a, a devastating body check. Now, whether or not he intended to hurt people, you know, I don't know. But I think it really starts uh, with officials, does it not? I, I assume that there is a mandate with officials now, or maybe you can enlighten me, uh, to ensure that these kids know, no hitting to the head. It's not to happen. Well, we start the year off each season with rule emphasis. In the last two years, particularly as we introduced the head contact rule, checking from behind was still a focus. Uh, checking to the head was a focus as well. And, you know, previously, checking to the head was a two-minute penalty and a 10-minute misconduct. Now it's anywhere from two minutes for accidental or incidental contact to four minutes for intentional to five minutes for uh, intentional with intent to injure. And, and potentially a match penalty with subsequent uh, sanctions. So um, the officials have a role to play, but so do coaches, so do players, and so do parents. And I, I always bring it back to, at the center of, of our concept is player safety. We focus on player safety. And, and then we look at the, the support system around the players. So we want players to respect one another. We want players to understand that the application of the rules are there to protect them, protect their teammates, protect their opponents. And then everybody that's around that core they're responsible for making sure that happens. Absolutely. Now, to play devil's advocate again, uh, players and parents at the peewee level in Calgary have argued that if we eliminate hitting from peewee in Calgary, tournament play is really putting these kids at risk because, of course, rural areas and other associations outside of Hockey Calgary don't necessarily uh, have to be to adhere to Hockey Calgary rules. I mean, if you're playing in Calgary, yes, of course you do, but as we all know, a lot of these tournaments are outside of Calgary. Where's the solution there? If they do reinstate the ban, I mean, I guess the question is, shouldn't it be provincial-wide? Isn't that the way to do it? it you know what? The, the reality is that um, you've got players traveling from the United States into Canada to play at the peewee level where they're not body checking in peewee games in, in the U.S. and they're body checking in Canada. Vice versa, those players travel down into the U.S. and they can't body check. So players make that adaptation. And I'll go back a number of years ago. I had an experience uh, working with a, an Adam team that, in Calgary that was traveling to Saskatoon at the time. Adam body checking was permitted in Saskatchewan. Uh, so that team prepared for the tournament they traveled to. They won the tournament. Actually, a real famous player was, was on that uh, Calgary team. It was uh, Matt Dumba. 
Um, that team was able to adjust and adapt based on the coaching that those kids received uh, from their regular coaching staff and the clinics that they held. So they were well prepared. I, I, I'm not suggesting that we, you know, we embrace the idea of, a, of a, a split personality in the way the games are played. I'd like to see uniformity. So, yeah. you know, I, my feeling is that if Calgary goes in that direction, uh, the outlying areas would go in that direction as well because they'd want to be competing on a level playing field. It's fair. Seems absolutely fair. Now, there's some talk, and maybe you find it silly. I'll get you both to give me your opinion. Um, if we do push, you know, Pee Wee body checking back to Bantam in Calgary, I mean, and this, you know, like you say, there was hitting at Adam at one point, and it does progress to the point where maybe these kids aren't hitting until they're 20 years old. I guess a lot of people are starting to get worried that hockey is going to lose the physicality in the long run, therefore altering our, our great game at its core. How would you respond to those concerns? Well, I think, you know, even without body checking, hockey is an extremely physical sport. Um, you know, if you watch female hockey, um, and people use that as a, you know, almost a joke example, but it's an extremely physical sport. I mean, they are rubbing, bumping, um, pinching, and there's a lot of wall contact that goes on. Sure, it doesn't have those big open ice collisions where you're lighting people up. Um, but, you know, the, the physicality is still there. And I, and I don't think anyone's talking about taking body checking out of all levels of hockey. I think medically what we're looking to do is try and eliminate it from a pediatric yeah. population yeah. That's the, that's the that is susceptible. Yeah. Folks, our half, hour, or pardon me, our half hour is nearly up, if you can believe it. We're going to ask our random question right when we return from the break. Stay with us. I think the hitting in peewee hockey is a, is a general broad topic you can do to all contact sports, whether it be martial arts, football, hockey, whatever. You need to ask yourself where does the definition between helicopter parenting and protecting your kids come into play. There is a line there, where is that line? Whether or not the, the parents are going to go overboard and say I don't want any hitting at all and I'm going to wrap my kid in toilet paper before he puts on his hockey equipment or his football equipment or whatever as opposed to all these supposed medical data uh, that supports concussions and concussion related injuries. I just think it's it's up to everybody to decide in majority what they want to do. Welcome back folks guys we're gonna jump right into it our random question the way this works I've got no idea what's all these cards Ian I'll let you pick one out you pass it back to me I'll ask you the question and we'll oh, take middle, it from there. Middle child. I'll take that sir thank you. And the question is the million dollar question do you believe police should have the right to take away your cell phone when caught using it behind the wheel? No. Guys, what do you think? You know, I, speaking to this, I, I uh, got to admit, I actually got into a little fender bender the other day when my phone buzzed and I looked down. Jeez, exactly. um, you know, I, I think penalties like fines and, and if it's recurrent, maybe. Um, I don't think initially that that's the way to go. I mean, people, a lot of people's lifeline in business and the effects of actually taking away a phone could be gigantic. So um, I, I think, uh, you know, again, like like hockey uh, hefty fines and because sure. uh, it, it, it could have been worse than a bumper so well spoken I would tend to agree what do you think Paul my answer is no I uh, I do feel that uh, uh, heavy fines are are key uh, though it's it's always about the sanction and really who can afford the fine I, I think you can figure out a way to get another phone but I'd, I'd rather hit you in the pocketbook yeah. yeah you don't take people's property I think for me that's the bottom line yeah well, folks, thanks very much for joining us. Hopefully we shed some light on what we feel is a very important issue. You can keep the conversation going, of course, on Facebook or Twitter. Of course, if you have a topic you want to discuss, let us know. Take care.